Number 11 in 6.1 is asking us to find the area of a region bounded by y equals 2, which is a horizontal line, y equals secant squared of x, which I think might have been the hard part of this problem, uh, and then bounded on this interval here from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So first things first, y equals 2 is just going to be this horizontal line here with a y-intercept of 2, so hopefully no challenge there. Coming up with the graph of secant squared of x might be something that gave you guys some trouble. So let's just kind of walk our way through it. If I was trying to come up with the graph of secant squared by hand, the first thing I would need is probably the graph of secant of x by hand. And to do that, I probably remember my graph of cosine of x. So in green here, I'm going to just draw a little dotted line here of the graph of y equals cosine of x, which begins at a peak here and then goes down. And at pi over 2, uh, yep, and at negative pi over 2, cosine is equal to 0. So the first, that's uh, not very well drawn, but there you go. My first wave of cosine is going to look something like that. And of of course, it would keep going and do this and this and this, but that's outside of the interval that we care about. Okay, so if that's the graph of cosine of x, let's switch to red now and see if we can't come up with the graph of y equals the secant of x, which of course is just the reciprocal of that green cosine graph we just came up with. So starting right here at the point 0, 1, when cosine is equal to 1 right here, secant would be equal to its reciprocal, and the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So both the graph of cosine of x and secant of x are going to pass through the point 0, 1. The next thing I would look at is anywhere that the graph of cosine of x is equal to 0, which happened here at pi over, uh, pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Those become vertical asymptotes on the graph of secant of x. So I know I've got vertical asymptotes right there. And then what do we see, guys? If I go back to green here, the cosine graph started at 1, and then in either direction it went down approaching 0. That means that it's reciprocal, which is secant is going to start at 1 and then go up on both sides, everybody, to a value that increases without bound and is approaching infinity. So the graph of secant of x is going to look something like that. Now, finally, let's put it all together here. The graph of secant squared of x really isn't going to look very much different y equals secant squared of x. So let's take a look. We started at the point 0, 1, and when you square that y coordinate there of 1, you still end up with 1. The vertical asymptotes are still going to be intact. All that's going to happen, guys, is that this secant squared graph is going to take just a slightly different shape than the graph of secant of x. It's going to be a little bit more squared off. At first, it's going to increase more slowly, but then it's going to increase faster on either, either side there. So there really isn't much of a difference, as far as we're concerned, everybody, about the graph between secant of x and secant squared of x. So I'm really just looking at the blue line, y equals 2 and then this purple curve here of y is equal to secant squared of x. Now, it looks to me as if, if I've drawn this correctly right here, that the pi over 2 and the negative pi over 2 aren't really that important because I think I'm really looking at this spot right over here, and I could be mistaken. I'm going to find out in just a second, but I want to know exactly what these x values are right here where the graph of y equals 2 equals or, or intersects the graph of secant squared of x. So I'm going to set those equations equal to each other. Secant squared of x is equal to 2. Let me take the square root of both sides, and that'll give me the secant of x is equal to, I'll just leave that as root 2. Let me reciprocate both sides now. Cosine of x then becomes 1 over the square root of 2, or you might know that better as root 2 over 2. And that means that x would be the inverse cosine of, where was I here? Hang on, guys. One thing I goofed up, when I took the square root of both sides, I should have put a plus or minus in front of that. So that exists here and here, and it's the cosine of plus or minus uh, 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2, however you want to look at it. And that tells us then, where is cosine equal to that? That is going to happen at both positive pi over 4, but also at negative pi over 4, which I guess that means my graph isn't entirely inaccurate here, guys. That is apparently negative pi over 4, and this one over here is apparently positive pi over 4. So that means that when I go to set up my integral, these are the limits that I'm going to be using, not the pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. 
So we have to decide, is this a horizontally or a vertically simple region right here? And the answer to that, I think we're going to do this one straightforward, the quote unquote normal way, running our rectangles here vertically. All right, so let's get working on this, guys. The area of this region then will be an integral taken with respect to x since those rectangles are running vertically, up and down like that. And the uh, integrand is going to be the top curve right here minus the bottom curve. So the top curve is y equals 2 minus the bottom curve, which is secant squared of x, all taken with respect to x. The limits of integration will be the lowest and highest values of x in this region. So you could go from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4, and this would do the job. The other thing you could do, though, is take advantage of the fact that this region is pretty clearly symmetrical. So you could do the lower limit of integration as 0 and then just double the result. Now, looking at this integrand, everybody, secant squared of x is not, oh, wait a minute, I take that back. Nope, we're going to go ahead and do this one by hand. You definitely could go to your calculator here, guys, but I like to practice this whenever I can. So I have my 2 out in front, and now in brackets, here we go. 2 anti-differentiated with respect to x is going to be 2x, and minus, here's where I stopped myself just a second ago, is secant squared of x the derivative of a function we learned back in the first semester? And the answer to that is yes, it's the derivative of tangent of x. So I didn't think that was one we were going to be able to anti-differentiate by hand, but now I changed my mind, and I think we can. So I've got a 0 and a pi over 4, and let's see what this looks like now, guys. That 2 I'm just going to keep out in front of the whole thing. Start a big set of brackets, and now I'll do parentheses. 2 times pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, or pi over 2, minus the tangent of pi over 4, which is just 1. Now let's not make the mistake, potentially, of thinking that 0 is automatically going to get us 0. Let's make sure. 2 times 0 is 0, gotcha, and minus the tangent of 0 is 0 as well. Okay, so it did work out that way. But we shouldn't probably assume that, which means really all we have to do, guys, is distribute this 2 in there. 2 times pi over 2 is just going to be pi and then minus 2. That's our answer, guys, and that'll be square units now for the area of this region. Now, a couple of things to think about before you move on. First of all, make sure if you're doing an area problem, your answer is positive. Well, since pi is greater than 2, pi minus 2 has to be positive, so I feel pretty good about that. The other thing would be to make sure that your answer is at least somewhat realistic here. So if I were to think just about what this region looks like right here, guys, maybe as a rectangle, Okay, it has a height of 1. We're going from 1 up to, to 2 right here. So a height of 1 and then a width now of pi over 4 times 2, which is pi over 2. So the area of the rectangle I just drew would be pi over 2 or about 1.5. Let's call it that. This answer that we came up with down here at the bottom is going to be about 1.14 square units, which is smaller than the 1.5, but I think that makes sense when you consider this area and this area that the rectangle counts that aren't actually shaded. So I feel pretty good about this answer here of pi over 2 square units for problem number 11.